I'm sorry, I messed up your name. Uh, where did you get the dragon t shirt? Uh, I had that same shirt and got it from an outdoor flea market. Pretty much the same. My friend, again, Mike Norman, the guy who made the belts, um, he got me that shirt for Christmas one year. He said, Oh, this is a cool shirt for John. He'd like it. <laughs> and that was it. So when they asked me to wrestle, I was 170 pounds. And I was fucking tiny. So I'm like, I'm going to wear a shirt. <laughs> and that's what I had. I borrowed a pair of red shorts from Donnie Allen. I had my sneakers and that dragon shirt. So that's what it was. North of Nashira has asked, do you still have that original shirt? I do not. That thing like disintegrated. That thing was ripped to shit. Shredded. <laughs> I don't have much of anything at all. Oh, really? A so lot you, of shit just got, a lot, a lot of shit just got thrown out. No. Looking back, that was not uh, uh, pretty foolish. A foolish man threw all this shit away. <laughs> like, there's there's these Topps trading cards. When I was in WCW, I had already left, and Topps sent me 500 of these baseball cards to sign and send back. I said, well, fuck you. I don't work there anymore, so I'm fucking keeping them. And... I signed a bunch and gave them to my friends. I was just giving them out to my friends. Here, hey, these are cool here. And then, like, 450 of them went into a dumpster oh. and got thrown out. Was this, like, with a house move or something? Or do you just No, I just said, uh, yeah, I was, I, was in, I was in one of my fucking moods. I'm like, fuck this, fuck this. Like, I don't <laughs> need this shit. And my buddy Chris, who worked at Tops, he said, yo, what did you ever do with those cards? I said, I fucking threw them out. He looked at me like aghast i said what he said if you hold, do, you, do you have any idea how much cards those would be worth if, if you would held them for like 20 30 years like we're talking about it. he goes okay one they're autograph cards i said and two they were made so they're officially made for that set of wcw cards and any collector who wants a complete set has to have yours because otherwise it's not a complete set. Even though you never sent them back, they exist. I go, son of a bitch. <laughs> Did so, yeah. So I see now. I see. Him, I see him go online. I found like seven of them one time at my parents' house, and I think I sold them for like three hundred bucks a pop. So let's see. So four hundred and fifty times three hundred. Yeah. Fuck. I fucked up. Hang on. Are we talking six figures? I'm trying to think. Well, the thing is, if, if there was only oh, well. 450, they wouldn't be worth as much because the, the market would be slightly more saturated. So, since there's only a, but they would be released, like but they would be released on my my schedule. I see. So you you would bleed. That's very clever. Just bleed them out over the course of you know Valentine's Day, right? Something like that. And if you go, hey, I got 450 of them. Come buy them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I have five for sale. Uh, do, and do you knowing know, me, one day that might just throw them into a fire. God, oh, don't say that. If you kept anything yeah. throughout your career of um, even sentimental value, even if it doesn't have any like collector's value, I have a couple original eight by tens from ECW. It's the triple crown one. It's got me with the tag belts, with cactus, the TV belt, and the world title. I have a couple, pretty much eight by tens. It's pretty much all I have. Original stuff. Would you do you sell anything? I mean, I, I could plug other things here, but do you sell any sort of signed ECW memorabilia now, kind of thing, or just not bother with? No, it? I have some eight by. I just have I have like an Etsy shop where I have eight by tens, not original ones, just eight by tens up that people can buy. But that's pretty much it. Yeah. Maybe some shirts, shirt designs. I don't know. Oh, I, don't, uh, I don't pay attention. Like I get invoices that hey, we printed this shirt for you and whatever. Yeah, okay. I don't even look. I don't even know what, what how much money's in there. I just just because you mentioned shirts, uh, Jarrett. Do oh God, I can't read the names. We're in very light blue here. Uh, what was your favorite shirt to wear to the ring? Um, uh, not really my favorite. It's kind of like I would just throw a bunch in my bag and whatever would come out. I did like I had an all over print Aussie shirt that I wore against Cactus that uh, that I like. I like that's just a regular shirt. Like those other ones, I would never wear in public. Like, just not my not my thing. Originally, the dragon shirt I probably would have worn, um, 
but once it kind of became my thing, like I'm like, I'm not gonna wear dragon shirts in public. It looks a little. Now people wear their own shirts all the time. But back then I thought it'd be I'd be kind of lame wearing my gimmick shirt in public. Like it's kind of am I looking for attention? Did you uh, introduce Brian Pillman to the uh, yes. Mikey shirts? Let's call them. Yes. Yep. He. Uh, so won't the eyeball. I forget the official name, but Liquid Blue makes all these shirts. So liquidblue.com. They have all these type of shirts that you've seen me wear. Um, he saw the eyeball shirt and told me it was cool. I said, here. So I, I gave him one um, because I had like four of them. And yeah, he liked it and then started wearing it. So I guess he went and got his own because the one I'd see him wear was not the one I gave him because the one I gave him was um, a little more worn. <laughs> If you will, because it's like ring worn. It was ring worn, mm. yes, and it looked worn. Because <laughs> so. he liked it anyway. He's you know, yeah. Because in the WWF like photo shoots from '96 when he'd gone over there, he was wearing that shirt in quite a lot of them as well. So he, uh, you gave him his look, definitely. I gave Brian Pillman his look. Look okay. at that. Because we're talking about merch, if, oh God, I, I keep saying this. Forget what's on the script. So I'm just going to ask what I'm interested in now. Uh, what was your first piece of official merchandise apart from 8x10s? There was a shirt. And it would say, help me on it, I think, in red and blue, whatever helped me. It had me looking up doing this. It's fucking worst shirt of all fucking time. <laughs> How many did you sell? And I... I Hated that fucking shirt, and Spike Dudley would wear it all the time. <laughs> Why are you fucking trolling me, you fuck? How many? How many did you sell in the end? Three. Three. I think all the Spike. I think all the Spike. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, you know, the royalties that ECW was paying if they indeed if they indeed did pay royalties for anything at that time. Yeah, royally fucked. Yeah, I also do a, a weekly, very well bi-weekly sometimes podcast with Shane Douglas and he was t talking nice. to me about the um, the figures from was it San Francisco toy makers the original San Francisco toy makers or whatever and I think Paul Heyman had basically said that he owned the rights to everyone's likeness and name and ECW and he paid royalties to nobody for those two sets of figures se series of figures sounds right hmm? sounds about right were you in the game? I never had one made of me so I didn't uh Oh, I thought I thought you. I didn't were... get screwed on that deal. Oh, I was going to say I thought you were one of them in the in the series. So no, then I'm wrong. No, nope. no. Nope. Were you in the games? The second one, and I made the same that Shane Douglas made for his t-shirt figure. 